Welcome to the Statrix. This is your world, and the government helped create it. The state builds transportation projects like roads and trains, approves the safety of your food, runs the schools, prints the money, controls much of your health care, and so much more. The government does good things and bad things, but with the government doing so much, it can be hard to imagine what the world would look like if the government did less. If there were no public schools, what would schools look like? Would there even be schools? If there were no government food inspection, would we all get sick? If there were no public transportation, would we be able to get around? A world where the government does less could be better or it could be worse, but many of us don't even think about what it might look like. That's not your fault. Most people accept the reality presented to them. The lack of imagination is the biggest challenge we face when fighting for a freer society. People simply can't imagine how some things would work without the government because, due to the government, they've probably never seen it. What would the world look like outside of the Statrix? What if the government did none of those things? Would we need a walk to work? Would our lunch be safe? Would we have to pay for it with seashells? Most of us don't think about it, partially because it's hard to imagine life outside the Statrix when the Statrix is all you've ever known. To see past the Statrix, we need to figure out how we got here, how, through seven steps, the government has corrupted our imaginations. Often, the government builds something to help poorer people, which is an admirable goal. They might build a train or a public school. Of course, the government doesn't ask for its money. It has taxes. Thus, it can build things no one wants, or maybe build things everyone wants. Now there's stuff that wasn't there before, and people start reorganizing their lives around it. They live in different neighborhoods and work in different areas. The world looks very different from before. There used to be a moderately priced private school near the public school, but it had to convince people to give them money, which the government school doesn't. Very hard to compete. Oh, and that guy who used to have a local carpool service? He went out of business too because of the subsidized train. Unless you're rich, there's now only one place to go to school and one way to get into town. Those virtual monopolies create a lot of interested parties. Teachers unionize and make sure the school is run on their terms. Transit workers revolt when an underused train is cut. Even property owners, who like subsidized transit and benefit from higher property values, will fight to make sure nothing changes. With no competition, the government's not too encouraged to do a great job running the trains or the schools. But there are no other options unless you're rich. It gets worse. Even when someone tries to come up with ways around the failing schools or the trains, the government tries to prohibit it. The poor get hurt the most because they can't afford to get out of the system. Now you're in the Statrix. Look around you. Looks normal. Public schools are necessary, of course, because there are no private schools. How would that even work? Public transit is necessary because where are the private options? In 1989, Russian President Boris Yeltsin visited an American grocery store and he couldn't believe his eyes. He marveled at the produce, the checkout counter. He asked the manager if he had to have a special education to manage the store. He said, even the Politburo doesn't have this choice, not even Mr. Gorbachev. Boris was having a red pill moment. And if Boris Yeltsin couldn't believe it, imagine all the normal Soviet citizens who also didn't know what they were missing, so they never demanded it. If 70 years ago, the government created state-run grocery stores, implemented them with taxes, reorganized the food industry around them, crowded out private grocery stores, colluded with the grocers' union, failed to run the stores adequately, and then prohibited private grocery stores and services like Peapod, people would be unable to imagine how it could be otherwise. We'd be like Boris Yeltsin. But that's the Soviet Union. We're different, right? What do you think is impossible? People say private schools could work, even for the poor. But you've never seen a private school that wasn't for rich people, so that sounds silly. Private transportation services? Pure science fiction. Private medicine? Private food inspection? Private non-state controlled taxis? No way. But is this possible? Is this possible? Is this possible? Is this possible? What's possible? I'm Trevor Burris. To read more, check out the link to my article. Thanks for watching.